Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to provide an introduction to two important functions in DAX, related and related table. Related is useful whenever you want to traverse a relationship while iterating inside the row context. And related table is somewhat the companion of related because it traverses the relationship the opposite way. Related goes from the many to the one side to grab one value from the target table, whereas related table works from the one side to the many side in order to retrieve all the rows that have a relationship with the current row context. The functions are simple in their usage, even though there are a couple of peculiarities of the functions. Related doesn't work if you are trying to traverse a limited relationship, whereas a related table is actually not even a function. Related table is an alias for calculate table. But let's look at all those concepts with some examples. We have our usual contours model here. Uh, I made some changes to the contours model, so it's worth taking a look at the diagram view. Uh, we have all the tables, but I'm not interested in all the tables. I created a smaller diagram just to point a couple of details. We have sales, product, and then I created two tables, subcategory and category, to create a chain of relationship that starts from sales and goes to category. Moreover, I also created a new table, product DQ. Product DQ is the same as product, same content, same table, same everything. The difference is that product is an import table, so it's loaded in the Vertipack store, whereas product DQ is a direct query table. Therefore, the relationship between sales and product is a limited relationship, and as we are going to see, related has a limitation over limited relationships. Now, how can we use related? Related is useful whenever you have a row context on a table, like if you are in a calculated column, and you want to access values of columns in a related table. So, for example, in the sales table, we have uh, the quantity, we have the net price, but we do not have the unit price. The unit price is actually stored in the product table. We have, uh, sorry, yes, the unit price is stored in the uh, product table. So if I want to compute the discount uh, row by row in sales, uh, what I need to do is subtract uh, from uh, the unit price uh, the net price. We know there is a relationship between the two tables, so sales uh, has a relationship with product, but I want to create the calculated column in sales uh, and access a column in the product table. If I try to do that without using related, it's not going to work. I can create a new column here. Let me increase the font, and we just call it discount. What I want to do is uh, subtract from the product unit price. You see that I don't even see that with IntelliSense. If I try to write product unit price minus sales net price, I can access the sales net price column because I do have a row context on sales, but I cannot grab the value of the product unit price column. And even if I hit enter, I have no luck. I still see an error. If I want to access a column on the one side of a relationship and I am iterating over the many side of a relationship, I can use related. By writing related product unit price, you see that the error disappears. And if I hit enter, I have my result. So the numbers are now being computed correctly and I can compute the discount directly in the sales table. So related is very simple in its usage, and related can also traverse chains of relationships. Let's look at the diagram again. Starting from sales, I can reach product, many to one. Then from product, I can go to subcategory, many to one. And again, from subcategory, I can reach category, still many to one. As long as the chain of relationship is always many to one, I can use related to grab any value from a target table. For example, I might want a calculated column, still in sales, that contains the quantity only for products that are of the audio category. What I can do is just go here, create a new column. Let's call it the quantity for audio. And I can do if 
related category. Category, where is category? There is a table related category. Okay, category equals audio. Then I retrieve the sales quantity. Otherwise, I just return a blank. And you see that related here is working, traversing the full chain of relationship, starting from sales and reaching the category table because the chain of relationship is always one to many. Sorry, many to one. I have several values, I don't see them here, but we can sort it descending to see that uh, for products that are of audio category, we have a value, otherwise we do not. Related works uh, with strong relationships. So related works as long as the relationship is many to one and it is a strong relationship. If you try to make related work uh, through a limited relationship, it is not going to work. And we do have a limited relationship here. Let me show you again the diagram because we have product and the relationship between product and sales is a regular strong relationship. But we also have this relationship between sales and product DQ. Product DQ is the same as product, but it's a limited relationship because they, the two tables live in two different islands. It's not because a product is in direct query. It could have two direct query tables in two different islands and we would be in the very same scenario. If I try to traverse this relationship using the uh, related function, this is not going to work. We can check it on the discount table. Instead of uh, using product, we try to use a product DQ and we get an error. The error says that the column product DQ unit price doesn't exist or doesn't have a relationship with any table in the current context. Uh, actually, this is because it made an error that should be product DQ in parentheses. If we try that, we have now a different error, which is uh, the same, but now has a different meaning. Product DQ is correct, but it doesn't work because it's a limited relationship. So, Related works whenever you are on the many side of a relationship and you want to grab values from the one side, no matter how long the chain is. What if you need to do the opposite operation? You are on the one side of a relationship and you want to access values that are on the many side. Related in this case would not work because related returns a number, a value, a string, but an individual value. And if you are on the one side of a one-to-many relationship, you will not find only one value. For one product, there are multiple sales. For one customer, there are multiple sales. Therefore, related cannot retrieve the value. But we do have another function, related table. Related table returns a table containing all the rows of a table that have a relationship with the current row where you are computing your value. Let's see that with several examples. We need to go on a table that is on the one side of a relationship. So we can go directly on category that is on the one side of a chain of one to many relationship that reaches sales. So in category, we can, for example, just count the number of transactions in sales. And we can create a new, not here, but in category, we can create a new column. Let's call it number of transactions where I can do a count rows to count the number of rows of the related table sales. Well, before doing that, let me ju just do a count rows of sales. And as you are going to see, this is going to produce the same number everywhere. So we have the number of transactions that is always the same number because we are not following the relationship. But if I do count rows of related, related table sales, then things are different and we obtain a number that is the number of transactions for each individual category. So related table works by following the relationship. Actually, related table is nothing but an alias for calculate table you could obtain the very same code if instead of using related table, you write calculate table here. 
relying on the context transition. So it's a bit more complex to understand. Related table is probably more readable, but the behavior is absolutely the very same. And you can use uh, this in uh, different ways. So, for example, if you have multiple row context, because related table is actually an alias for calculate table, all the row context will be transformed into a new filter context under which the table is being computed. For example, we can compute a new column that is the average number of transactions per product. Let's call it average product transactions. And we start another iteration so that we have two row contexts, one on the category and a new one that we do by iterating over the products of the category. So we can compute, for example, the average X of related table product. And these related table are returns the product that have a relationship with the current row context. We do have a row context on the category, so these are the products of the current category. And then we can do a count rows of related table sales. Now, this second related table is interesting because uh, when this related table is being executed, we have two row contexts. One is created on the category table, and it is the one of the calculated column. But we also have another row context introduced by average X over the related table product. Both row contexts are used in order to find the rows in sales that have a relationship with both. And if I hit enter, you see that we have a result that is different. That is the number of transactions, the average number of transactions for each individual product. Now, in this scenario, it's not so evident that uh, the two row contexts are being used together. Because actually, if you think about that, the row context on the product is more restrictive than the row context on the category. It filters a smaller number of sales, and any sales related to the current product is also related to the category because of the relationship that exists between product and category. But we can change that and create, for example, an average yearly transaction. So we iterate, instead of iterating on product, we can iterate it over the year. We can create a new column that we call average yearly transaction. We still use an average X, but this time we do not iterate over the product, but we iterate over the year. We can use all no blank row date year that returns all the possible years, and then we do a count rows of related table of sales. Again, this is going to work, and it is going to consolidate both the row context that average X creates over all no blank row and the row context that exists on the category. So it will perform the average at the year level and at the category level together in the same calculation. Besides, it is also useful to know that related table is nothing but an alias for a calculate table. If you remember, related did not work through a limited relationship because of a limitation in the DAX language. Related table actually works also through limited relationships because it's nothing but calculate table and calculate table works against a limited relationship. Let me show you that with an example that is a bit more complex than the previous ones. I want to create a measure that computes uh, the number of transactions of only the best products. So I first do a top end on the product table to retrieve the top 10 products, and then I compute the number of transactions of the top 10 products. And we will perform the calculation both on the product table, that is using a strong relationship with uh, the sales table, and with the product direct query table, that is using a limited relationship just to check whether it works both on the regular strong relationship and on limited relationships. So let's do that. We want to create this time a measure. Let's create it in sales, a new measure. 
that we call best product sales best product product sales we want first of all a variable containing the best products and this is nothing but a top n the top 10 for example from the product table based on the sales amount this table contains uh, 10 rows which are the top products and then the transaction transaction of the best products we just do smx over the top the best products and then we do account rows of related table sales and then we just return the transaction of the best products so this is counting the number of transactions of only the top 10 products and it's working because i'm using a related table that will work against the row context that SumX creates over the top 10 products we can check the result by placing it in the report and we have several numbers i'm not interested in the number right now i'm interested in checking whether the same code works against a limited relationship so in order to check that i can simply copy everything and all of what i need to do is change the reference to the product table we create a best product sales direct query and instead of iterating over product we iterate over product dq the relationship between sales and product dq is a limited relationship and we are relying on related table it's going to work because a related table is actually an alias for calculate table if i just place create the measure and place it here it produces the very same result because related table works not only on strong relationship but also on limited relationships as you have seen both related and related table they are simple functions related is useful whenever you are iterating over a table and you want to grab values from the one side of a relationship scan in the many side you grab values from the one side related table performs the opposite operation when you are scanning the one side of a relationship you want to grab the list of values in the many side of the relationship and related table returns a table related does not work against limited relationships related table works also against limited relationship because related table is nothing but an alias for calculate table therefore it relies on the context transition to perform its calculation enjoy that <laughs>